All right, now we'll move into session 5.2 over advanced query wizards in our text that you're following along. We're on page 254 in the e-text. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the cross-tab query wizard. And we'll go, once again go back to our clinic database to perform these steps. All right, with our clinic database open and the navigation pane closed, let's go ahead and go up to our create tab. Let's go to our query wizard this time instead of query design. And let's select the cross tab query wizard. Once you've got that selected, go ahead and click OK. And you'll see our cross tab query dialog box here. Next, let's select our queries selection here for what the queries we want to view. Let's select our query, query patients, and invoices. Go ahead and click Next down here, and that will open up our query, our next wizard dialog box here. This is the dialog box where we'll choose the field for our row headings. Let's go ahead and click City because that's the one our customer wants us to select. All right, now we'll select our field values that will serve as the column headings. And our customer has wants us to select the invoice paid. Let's go ahead and select that. There we selected invoice paid. And let's click next here. And as you can see, we have our column headings here, which we've selected as invoice paid. And we have our row headings, which we had selected previously as city. Go ahead and click next. Now we're going to select which field will be calculated for each row and column intersection in the function to use for that calculation. Then the results of the calculation will appear in the row and column intersections in our query results. Now our customer Cindy, she wants us to calculate the sum of the invoice amount field for each row and column intersection. So let's go ahead and click invoice amount as instructed. And then we're going to select sum. Before we proceed, we're going to make sure that our yes include row sums is checked here. And this will create a column showing the overall totals for the values in each row of the query record set. So let's go ahead and click next now. That will open our final cross tab query wizard dialog box in which we will choose our query name. So all we're going to do here is just take out the underscore backspace there. And let's go ahead and click finish. That'll save our cross tab query and we should see our record set. Go ahead and make sure we apply best fit here so it looks best. There we go, and you'll notice that the headings here, we have our paid invoices here and our unpaid invoices here by city. Okay, our next set of instructions will be to change the cross-tab query column headings. As we jump back to our e-text for tutorial 5, session 5-2, we'll see the steps now for changing the cross-tab query column headings. And they're all listed here on the single 261 and 262 pages. So let's go back to our query and get on the Home tab and switch to Design View. And we'll start our steps. Go back to Design View. And there we go. You'll notice here in our Design View that we have four entries in our grid. We have the first one here which produces our row heading. We have the one that produces our column heading. This one here will produce our total values and our grand total one is produced right here. Now we need to replace our field box values for our column heading with the if function or expression to change our negative one and our zero column headings to paid 
and unpaid. Just looks a lot better. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so let's right click the invoice paid field box here. Go to zoom. And let's build our expression as defined here by step three. So we're going to change our text here. And yours should match mine. Go ahead and click OK. Let's go ahead and save. And let's run. Now you see the results posted here. We should have six records. And you should be able to see that our last two columns now have been changed to paid and unpaid. All right, let's go ahead and close our query and reopen our navigation pane here. And we'll move on to, to create the query using the field duplicates query wizard. So let's go to look at those steps now. To do the next part here, we are going to perform the following six steps. Let's go back in and go to our query wizard. Okay, we'll go, we're in our create tab. Go to our query wizard. And this time we are going to select find duplicates query wizard. Go ahead and click OK. Now here in our first Find Duplicates Query Wizard dialog box, we're going to select the table or query on which we want to base our new query. And we're going to use the visit table. So we'll go ahead and select that. I'm going to click the next button. Now we're going to ch choose the fields that we want to check for duplicate values. So in the available fields box, we're going to click visit date. We're going to add that to our duplicate value fields. We're going to click the next button here. Now here we are going to go ahead and select the additional fields we want to display in the query results. And based on our customer Cindy, she wants us to select all the remaining fields to be included in our query results. We're going to select all there. Let's go ahead and click the next button. All right, let's go ahead and enter the name for our query here in the dialog box, and we are going to enter the name from the book. Duplicate visit dates, you should have that same information in yours. Make sure that the option is selected for viewing the results. So let's go ahead and click the finish button, the completer wizard. And you can see the result is as expected, all 50 records as we were expecting. Go ahead and match the results you have with figure 5-24 in the e-text to make sure that it looks the same. Everything looks good here, so let's go ahead and close our query. Okay, the next section that we are going to do is we're going to create the query using the find unmatched query wizard. And those steps are listed here. There's only four steps here and our figure to compare to. So to complete these steps here, we will go ahead and jump back over to our database now. Once again, let's go to our query wizard, open it up, and we're going to do the find unmatched query wizard. Go ahead and select that, click OK. All right, this time we are going to select a query. And the query we are going to select is the patients by name. Scroll on down here. Now let's select the next button. And now we are going to choose our visit table. Now that we've selected the table that contains the related records, we're going to go ahead and click Next. Now let's choose our fields. Now as you examine the results here, we easily notice that the Patient ID field 
is our common field that exists in both of our elements here. Let's go ahead and select the patient ID field in both areas. Now let's select the button in the middle to show the relationship between the two and join them. And you can see how they are matching down here. Then go ahead and click the next button. As you've seen before, we're at the point now where we need to select the fields we want to see in our query record set. And we're going to go ahead and display all of these, so go ahead and move them all over there. And we're going to go ahead and click the next button and we're going to give our query a name. And the name we're going to enter is inactive patients. Go ahead and enter that now. Once you've put that in, make sure that the option button for viewing the results is selected, which it is. So go ahead and hit finish. And let's see our results. Go ahead and close the navigation pane there. And you can see it resulted in four records, which figure 5-26 shows that we did our query correctly. Now that we've created our query record set displaying our four patients without visits, let's go ahead and finish 5.2 by going to the last section of 5.2, and that's to set the top values property for our query. Okay, so let's go ahead and close our query and skip back over to our text. And you'll see that we are in the to set the top values property for the query here on 267, 268. Once we complete those sets, we will be done with section 5.2. Let's get back to our database. Alright, go ahead and open your navigation pane once again. And we are going to open the large invoice amounts query. And we will open this in datasheet view. Alright, you'll see we have 14 records here. These are the fields that have been built to our query. Let's go ahead and close our navigation pane. And let's switch to, go back to home and switch to design view. Okay, let's go up here in our design tab. Go to the query setup group. And then we're going to go to the return arrow here with our screen tip top for top values which is what we're working with in this last section. And we are going to select 25%. Now, if there was a number or percentage of records we wanted to select, but the number doesn't appear here, we could still type in that value here, and it would return what, what was expected. So you can always type in the number or percentage in the return box here if it's not already listed. All right, let's go ahead, now that we've selected 25%, and run the query check out our results and you'll see that we have four records that were displayed these records will represent the patients with the highest 25 percent of the invoice amounts so 25 percent of the original 14 records that we saw before we applied our change All right now that we've modified our query let's go ahead and save and we will then move on to session 5.3